Hi, I'm Mike Rosen, Editorial Director of SOA Institute and co-chair of the SOA Conference Series. I'd like to spend a few minutes describing our course on designing service-oriented applications. The course grew out of dozens of consulting engagements that I've had helping customers and companies understand what SOA is and how to get value from it. This year, the course is freshly updated with new material from my upcoming book on SOA architecture and design strategies with a new case study and new workshop exercises. The course is part of our SOA training curriculum and we will be delivered four times over the year in Chicago, Washington, D.C., San Francisco, and New York. As I work with companies that are starting with SOA, or ones that are struggling with their current approach, I see three common areas of confusion. First, what is SOA? In particular, what are the architectural aspects of SOA compared to web services or other distributed technologies? And beyond that, how should the architecture influence design? Second, what is the relationship between BPM and SOA? What's the hype and what's real? How does functional decomposition at the business process level translate into requirements and design for business services? And third, and most importantly, how do you design a good service? This seems to be the most misunderstood aspect of SOA. A meeting doesn't go by where someone doesn't ask me, how big should a service be? This course is designed to answer these questions and give participants an understanding of the architectural aspects of SOA how they address enterprise concerns and other critical aspects, including semantic information models, and the impacts and constraints that together all of these put on the design of services. But the course goes well beyond just an explanation. Using a case study, we walk through a detailed design process, starting with business requirements and analysis, through service identification, interface design, and implementation design. Workshop exercises reinforce these concepts. We'll show how and when to incorporate architecture and enterprise concerns into the design, what design artifacts to produce, the different types, sizes of services, and how they fit into the overall design and architecture. Most people attending this course will be either architects, designers, business analysts, or program or project managers. Architects will learn the relationship between enterprise and architectural concerns and the SOA design process. This is particularly important in making architecture actionable. As architects, we should always remember that creating architecture itself provides little value. Value comes from using architecture to help projects meet immediate needs, but doing so in a way that meets the long-term needs and greater goals of the overall enterprise. This is critical to realizing the promise of SOA. Designers will learn a step-by-step -step process for analysis and design of services and what the different types of services are. They will understand what information is required from the business for complete service design, how that relates to business process and information models, and how it shows up in the different design artifacts. More importantly, they will learn how to start thinking in terms of SOA. In other words, how to make that design paradigm shift. Business analysts will learn the relationship between business strategies, goals, and objectives, and the capabilities and information that are used to achieve them. The direct link between capabilities, business services, and business processes will be illustrated. Analysts will learn how to use business process models as the link between business architecture and IT design, specifically SOA. Managers will get an understanding of the SOA architecture and design process that will enable them to understand, govern, plan, and manage SOA projects that deliver value both to their immediate project and to the enterprise. Students start the course with some understanding of SOA, but typically with some lingering confusion about what it all means. At the end of the course, they've gained an understanding of how it all fits together what different roles contribute to the process, the impact of architecture, and how to get started in designing services. These are just a few of the comments from students who have taken the course in the past. 
If any of you are currently or used to be programmers, maybe you've had an experience similar to this. When I first started learning Java, I tried to write it as though it were C++. After all, object-oriented is object-oriented, isn't it? Well, not really. The way you go about solving a problem in Java is quite different. It yields the same result, but the design approach is different. It takes some time to make this paradigm shift of design philosophy. We can apply the same analogy to SOA. Here's a typical approach. We start with business requirements, design a solution, a business process based on a service paradigm. We look for existing services that meet our design. All that sounds right, doesn't it? But the result is that we rarely find the services we're actually looking for. The SOA design approach is different. We'll still start with business requirements, of course, but the first thing that we do is look to see what services already exist or are already planned. Then we design our solutions and business processes around the existing services. A subtle but hugely important distinction that results in most services getting reused rather than replicated. These are the kinds of insights that students from this class have gained in the past. So this course, again, is part of SLA Institute's Certificate of Training Program, a series of eight courses covering a range of SLA topics, including architecture, design, implementation, integration, and governance. Check out our website at slainstitute.org for more details on scheduled and custom training and to register for this course. Looks like my time's up. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you at a class in a city near you.